Good morning. In the book of Nehemiah, which, let's be honest, is not a book that's often read, is it? I mean, when was the last time you read it? Perhaps we should. It's got some interesting insights into the way that we think, the way that we function as a people who are looking to serve God, but sometimes taking our eye off the ball a little bit. Anyway, in the book of Nehemiah, they had been away from the temple, away from Jerusalem for quite a while. As a result, the walls of the temple and the walls of Jerusalem, the structure of this precious place of connection with God, had fallen into disrepair. They had broken down. And while it was very much a physical collapse, it also spoke of the collapse of their priorities, their morals in some ways, I suppose, their commitment, their spirituality. And it struck me this week as I was reading a bit of Nehemiah, it just struck me what a salutary tale there is, what an opportunity for reflection there might be in this for us all. Somebody said to me not that long ago, one of the reasons church is so important is because maintaining your faith, maintaining your walk, maintaining your development with Jesus when you are not an active part of a church community. They said, one of the reasons I like to go to church is because it requires far too much work to do it on your own. And they're right, because the structures, the rhythm of church life, the rhythm of the church week, it does keep us orientated, doesn't it? The fact that we're going to go to a prayer meeting or a Bible study, or we're going to meet together on a Sunday, it does kind of, well, it, it puts connection points in your week, doesn't it? Just to orientate you once again, and perhaps if your eyes have got a little distracted, orientate you once again towards God pull us back when we lose our focus maybe or even when we are tempted to wander away and I got to thinking over the last year many of our structures have been broken down the rhythm of our faith week has been fractured and I wonder if we can honestly say that we have maintained our walk with Jesus I wonder if over the last year we can honestly say that we have kept on top of the tendency that there is in the human heart to slide away into comfortable patterns that are not necessarily actively seeking to grow in God. Are we closer to him now than we were this time last year i think this is a, a right time to ask that question because we're approaching the point at which we will have been experiencing the pandemic's effects for a year so over this last year what has happened in us are we deeper in our knowledge and our understanding are we deeper in our sensitivity to his voice and in looking for opportunities even in lockdown to serve him now, some of us will say yes. Some of us will say, oh, definitely, this year has taken us to a place where our living reflects that we cling closer to God. This year has taken to a, us to a place where we have felt the need to pray more, to seek him more, to serve him more, to be more open to him. Which does make me wonder sometimes whether we need to review the way that we do church and the way that we do church life because undoubtedly for some people it will have had that effect some of us if we answer that question honestly will say well actually no but then that's no different to most years because just because we go to church doesn't mean that we are growing in our faith and growing in our experience of Jesus, does it? Just because we sit in church each week doesn't mean that we are developing our understanding of what it means to hear his voice and to walk with him. And some of us, if we are honest, will recognize that the fractured patterns of this last year, maybe the pressures and the fears of this last year, maybe the loss and grief of this last year, if we are really honest, some of us will recognize 
that we have let slip what we once had. That we have lost our edge. That we've taken our eye off the ball. Whatever, however you want to describe it. And it may not be that we have gone down the road of some terrible sin that we need to repent of, etc., etc., etc. But it may be that in the things that we say, the things that we think, the things that we feel, and possibly some of the things that we do, if we're really honest, we will acknowledge that over the last year, with the walls broken down, we have not grown. And maybe, to use an old-fashioned word that you don't hear much these days, maybe we have backslidden. What do you think? Now look, understand me in this, because the last thing I'm being is judgy about it, all right? Life is hard at the minute. And there's a reason why fellowship is important, and it's not just the chocolate biscuits. There's a reason why we are told not to neglect the meeting together of ourselves. There is a reason why church is at the heart of the faith community and our faith journey. There's a reason for all of that. And when that is in many ways taken away from us, when we lose that, it is understandable perhaps that gaps in the walls will let the wind whistle through and we will have grown cool that we won't have had the impetus to stir ourselves up. Because let's be honest, it is a lot easier to just kind of push those little prods, those little prompts of God's Spirit, to push them off to one side when we're sitting comfortably listening to the Word, eating our bacon and eggs, than when we are sitting in church surrounded by God's people who are praying for us and thinking about us and caring about us, and we are in the focus of that moment kind of gives you an insight there into what we do on a Sunday morning when we're listening to this doesn't it but anyway so the last thing I'm being I'm genuinely not being judgy in any way shape or form in this today because we are all susceptible to drifting stalling pausing sliding back and I was challenged by this this week challenged by the thought from Nehemiah's experience of his city because there will come a time when we are back together there will come a time when the rhythm of the church will be established again maybe when it happens we will actually appreciate the opportunity of coming to church a little more because you know let's be honest there were more than a few Sundays where we thought oh I'm too tired I can't yeah yeah Having had it taken away from us, maybe we'll value it a little bit more. But there will come a time when we will get back together. And there will come a time when that happens. There will come a time when we will be stirred up in worship. We will be invigorated by the word. We will be encouraged by one another's fellowship. And we will perhaps draw closer and be open to be convicted of the spirit and to hear his voice. But it occurred to me this week, reading Nehemiah, what if, what if, rather than waiting till that time, what if we now intentionally choose to build those structures, those patterns of behavior, that rhythm of faith, to build those activities for ourselves now? What if we choose not to wait until we are back in church so that we might be stirred up, but we choose to stir ourselves up, to invigorate ourselves in our faith, to encourage ourselves and one another closer to God, to be convicted of and open to the Spirit where we are right now? What if we did that? Rather than waiting for the doors to open, we chose to build the walls now for our own lives. Imagine then what it would be like when we come back together and we are all already 
moving forward in God. We come back together, burning bright because of the passion that is within us, rather than the flatness that has been imposed on us. We come back having come through the fire, like it says in the Psalms, and been refined like silver. What might it do if we stir that up in ourselves now? What might it do to our function as a community of faith? What might it bring to the message that we have for a world that is trying to find its way? How might we help those that we have connected with in this time who understand this? We are moving towards a crossroads for many of the things, the emotional things, the spiritual things that have been stirred up within people over this last year. We are moving towards a crossroads in those things. Because as people gain confidence in the vaccine and confidence in restrictions being lifted and confidence that the medics have got it all under control, it is natural for the human heart to become settled in its way again. So if we actively stir up our faith, actively draw closer to God, actively build up the walls of patterns of behavior that deepen our experience of him day by day and open us more and more to the voice of his spirit. If we do that, for those people who are going to stand at that crossroads, having perhaps been convicted, having perhaps been stirred up about spiritual things, if we are on fire for God, Again, an old-fashioned phrase. How might that help them to find the right path forward, the eternal path forward from those crossroads? And if you look in Nehemiah chapter 2, you find that Nehemiah takes a trip around the city and he saw where the walls and the special places of connection with God were broken down. Where those structures that enabled people to come into the presence of God were dilapidated. And he saw how the people were content to let it be that way. And it was that that really caught hold of my heart this week. Because there is a real danger for all of us that we are content to just let it drift. It's a natural human tendency that we actually just find a little safe space that we shut ourselves away in rather than having a life that is active and looking out and especially when we feel threatened facing the danger. So Nehemiah took a trip around the city and he saw all these things and he saw all that was going on and he saw the attitude of the people. And in chapter 2, verse 17, he says this. Do you see the trouble, the distress, the foul-smelling bad danger that we are in? That's what it actually means, the foul-smelling bad danger. Love that phrase. Do you see the reality of our situation, he says, how the city lies in ruins? Come, let us build the wall that we may no longer suffer disgrace. Where are our walls broken today? Where are there gaps in our structures of faith and connection with God so that the cold wind of temptation, of despair, of discouragement can blow through? Have a walk around your city. Have a walk around your spiritual dwelling. Where are the gaps in the walls so that those things can rail against you? I'm genuinely not judging anyone. Genuinely not being judgy in this at all. And I'm certainly not looking for anyone to get in touch with me and make great statements of recommitment or whatever. 
I'm just laying this before us. Because no matter how good we are, no matter how in tune we are, no matter how passionate we are for Jesus, the risk is there for all of us. But what if we rebuilt the walls? What if we rebuilt the wall of worship and adoration daily, coming into God's presence and at taking time to worship him and acknowledge how great thou art, our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. What if we took time daily to do that? What if we took time daily to pray and not just pray, oh God, please give me my daily bread. But what if we took time daily to say, Lord, what would you have me pray? To think about people, to think about the world around us and not say, Lord, give me, but say, although there's nothing wrong with saying, Lord, give me, you know, we're allowed to do that. But to say, Lord, what would you have me pray? How would you have me change this world by connecting my prayers and my faith to your desire and your will? What if we took time to rebuild the wall of daily stopping whatever we're doing and praying? Now, somebody got in touch with me this week and they said, you know, we often have said over the years, if I had more time, I would pray more. Well, some of us have got a lot more time. Have we been praying more? What if we bu built the wall of worship and adoration? What if we built the wall of daily prayer? What if we built, again, the wall of taking time every day to reflect on a bit of God's word? Not just as a general awareness, but looking for what he would say to us. Specifically sitting down and opening a Bible and letting him speak to us. And what if we rebuilt the wall of opportunities for fellowship? I want to say opportunities for fellowship. I don't mean opportunities just to have a chat. It's good to have a chat. It's nice to go, oh, have you seen the weather? I mean, look at the state of that snow. It's nice to be able to do that. But what if we create the wall, rebuild the wall of intentional opportunities to engage in spiritual conversation with one another? And it may well be somebody that's in your house already. You can have fellowship with your spouse. But maybe it's you need to bring somebody or Zoom somebody or FaceTime or WhatsApp or other opportunities are available but what if we rebuilt that wall of regular fellowship to prompt us in where we are with god what difference would rebuilding those walls if you're really honest what difference might they make to where you are now Now, some of you may well be thinking, do you know we're a few minutes into this and he's not prayed yet? He usually prays at the beginning. Why has he not prayed yet? Is he going to pray? Because we get used to a usual form of doing things, don't we? But I'm not. I'm not going to pray today at all. Rather, I would ask you, to pray out of what the Lord prompts you, out of what I've said. You take time to pray, just as God prompts you out of what I've said to you today. Because we need to determine where our walls are broken down. Do you see the trouble we are in where our city is broken down come let us build our walls again that we may no longer suffer disgrace